Hello, this is Leah with Scraptastic Patchwork, and welcome to my very first quilt along. So this is a scrappy improv, and it's called Scraptastic Calm in the Chaos. So why improv? Why did I choose that as my very first quilt along? I think I've been doing improv since the beginning of my quilting career, even though I had no idea that's what it was called. I am not someone who likes to follow patterns very much. I end up changing them and I don't like rules. And with traditional quilting, there's a lot of rules and a lot of pattern. I like to feel what I do. I like to change what I do as I go. And I kept coming back to that. I was learning the traditional way of quilting with patterns and rules and yet I would find myself constantly veering off. And when I discovered improv, I thought, okay, yep, that's what I love. And so I've been kind of exploring that for the last couple of years, just really getting to know what that means. And as recently, I've learned improv techniques that I didn't know before. And I am so excited to show you some of these techniques. There are lots of techniques. I'm only going to show you a few in this quilt along, but I thought it was a good place to start, just a few. I think that this is really, really good for beginners because you don't know any better. <laughs> if you've been quilting for a long period of time, it's going to be more difficult because you're so used to straight line rulers, templates, pattern, points having to meet, intersections having to meet all the time. You have been quilting and this is your first time that you're going to be exploring improv. Free your mind. Let's just go through this journey together and explore what maybe you could get into and really love. The other reason that I chose improv as my first quilt along is I felt like it was a way to be truly unique. There are so many great tutorials out there, so many great quilt alongs, so many great patterns. Improv lets me be completely unique and offer something to you guys that you've never seen before because it's mine. And also, it's going to be completely unique to you. That's what's so great about improv is no matter what concept I'm showing you or some techniques or what my general layout is going to be for this quilt, you are still cutting those lines and putting scraps of fabric together. And so yours will turn out completely different than mine. That's exciting. There's no perfection in improv. There's no mistakes in improv. Mistakes actually lead to wonderful things. Improv is excellent for rule breakers. So join in. <laughs> Let's break some rules. Improv is also excellent for those of you who feel like you have an artistic voice, something to say, something to create with fabric that can be truly yours without the constraints of someone else's pattern or someone else's, someone else's boundaries. Improv is about emotion or concept. It's your take on the landscape or a nature or an object. It's completely intuitive. It's translating your emotion and what you see into patchwork. So what is this concept? Scraptastic calm in the chaos. So 2020 has been a really weird, difficult, crazy year. And I thought that we should honor that, celebrate that, put the, to some of those issues to bed <laughs> with a quilt and kind of translate all those emotions, conflicting emotions onto a canvas of fabric. So in my intro video and the 
playlist will be linked below of all of these videos in this series. In the intro video, I asked you to list out 10 issues, conflicts, struggles that you have had this year. Identify 10 of them, six in kind of together, and then four especially difficult ones set aside separately. Those are personal. I will never ask you to share those. We are going to balance those chaotic elements, those 10 chaotic elements with calm. And that is your way of showing the balance that maybe you struggled with but achieved. And also maybe you just endured through this chaos, but you made it. And you, some, whatever it means for you, you took control. So it's the balance between chaos and calm of what 2020 is for all of us. So what do you need for materials? You will need lots of scraps. And I asked you in the intro to kind of gather scraps that speak to you, ones that you have a reaction to. It doesn't have to be a good one, but some kind of reaction, not some boring fabric that you've seen a thousand times and you don't really have anything. Eh. I want to have some good and bad feelings towards this fabric. So grab your scraps and it can be any kind of fabric. It doesn't have to be quilting cotton. This, I'm aiming for it to be a wall quilt. So it doesn't necessarily mean you're going to be washing it that often, so you don't have to have fabrics in there that will shrink all the same. However, maybe doing that would make it even more interesting. So I'm saying throw anything into it. Then you will need one yard of what I'm calling your calm. So you need a fabric that when you look at it, you, it, makes you feel calm or somehow have a restful emotion towards it. So this is mine. This is Moda Grunge Basic Gray, and I think it's Peacock, but it's, it's got, it's reads as a solid, but for me, I prefer some kind of depth to my fabric, so I can't go solid, solid. But if you have a solid that you love, then by all means use it. You need a yard of this. We will be placing that in a certain way that I will tell you as we go. It's kind of a mystery element and I'm excited for that. You will need batting, of course. This quilt I'm aiming at approximately 40 inches square. So a crib size batting would be perfect because it will give you, I think it's like 45 by 60, so it'll give you plenty of space on either side when you, we go to sandwich it, or if you have scraps, but I would say 45 inches square is what you need to be safe for batting. And I'm going to be using just warm and natural, I think, just a cotton. You'll need backing, but I plan on using all my leftover scraps. You don't have to do that. Feel free to grab whatever, whatever fabric you wish for the back. I think you need about a yard and a quarter, maybe a yard and a half, depending on how, what size yours ends up. But as I said, I'm aiming for 40 inches square. We're not going to bind this quilt. We're going to face it. So the calming fabric, you should have enough left over to face it. And then we'll use scraps for the corner pieces, which will act as a hanger if you care to hang it on the wall. So the plan. The plan is we build these 10 chaotic elements sections. We're going to build six rectangle shape sections and four square shaped sections. They don't have to be perfectly square or perfectly rectangle. We'll deal with that later. Approximately in size, we want the rectangles to be 10 by 20 and the squares to be 10 by 10. But again, approximate. 
We're not going to go perfect measurements here. So the first three weeks of this quilt along, we will learn three techniques, three improv cutting and patchwork techniques. Along with those, in those three weeks, we will make and build six of those sections or units. Your assignment each of those three weeks will be two. While you're building those sections, you're going to be thinking of each of those chaotic elements. Week four will be the live video and we'll do a Q&A as well as possibly I may throw a curveball at you. What to do with your six units that you've already built. The fifth week, we will work on the four chaotic elements that we set aside as the most important. Those will be the approximate square shaped ones. And we will learn a fourth technique, how we treat those. The surprise element then is going to be how everything is put together. And so week six is assembling the top, the quilt top. In week six, we will also make the backing and sandwich the quilt. In week seven, we will quilt. And I think that it's important to do some free motion. Now, I fully admit I have not free motioned for years, so it will be a learning curve for me too, as well as some optional hand quilting because I want us to kind of slow down in that week and pay attention to some of the elements. And then in the final week, week eight, we will completely face it the quilt as well as add those corner pieces for the hanging and we will do a reveal and we will have some final thoughts and I will share some things maybe even some of your pictures that you've sent to me we'll discuss that a little later are you ready to get started I am so excited to do this however I'm gonna give you rules <laughs> Are you ready? No rotary cutters, none. And no straight edges, no rulers. So this is scary, I know, for some of you, but this is how you ensure that every cut you make is yours, yours only. It's going to be unique to you, and you're going to get many more organic, free-flowing, seams this way. So this is all we're using. A pair of scissors for every cut. Every cut is a scissor only. I know that's scary. I know it is, but we're going to do it. Trust me. Trust me. It's going to be beautiful. So before we go to the machine, of course, we need to pull our fabric. So we're going to work on this first chaotic element. So we need to go look at our scraps with that particular one in mind. I am gonna share one of mine with you so that I can illustrate what I mean by having that element in mind when you pick your fabrics. So I'll try to make this a short story. <laughs> oh, and it's a safe one, um, it, you know, it's not a, extremely personal one so I feel I feel good telling you this but nev nevertheless it is a very it's a trigger for me an anxiety trigger so I didn't grow up in the country I grew up in right outside the city suburbs of Minneapolis so when we had animals stray animals show up on our property and stay then chances were they didn't have a home and so we would find a home we would just take them in ourselves or we would take them to a rescue then i moved out in the country and of course there's barn animals i mean there's barn cats and feral cats and i get that i understand that completely but two years ago 
five cats show up on our property and did not go away. We rescued three of them. We found homes or we brought them to a rescue. We could not catch the other two. And those two just happened to be a male and a female unfixed. Pretty soon, of course, that meant that we had kittens. So those first two kittens, that's all that were in the litter. I don't know if she lost some of them, but uh, those first two kittens I kept, I adopted. They are my boys now. We attempted many, many, many times to catch her and to catch the male too. He actually got so tame that we were able to pet him, but we were not able to trap him. Anytime we tried to get him in a carrier, it <laughs> did not go well. So eventually he got sick actually and disappeared. So he must have gone away to die. However, two years later, we still have Billy, our female who is not fixed still. And now, as of today, we have gone through 20 kittens. We have caught all of them except for this last litter, and we need to start working at catching those now. Um, we have found homes, we have sent the rest to rescues, and four, or excuse me, three of her kittens, we actually caught and fixed and re-released. And we have, <laughs> both my parents and us have spent lots of money on these barn cats. They have a fantastic home, a basically two-story and loft, insulated cat home that my husband has made. Yeah. Okay, so why does this give me anxiety? I have always been a lover of animals. I have, in fact, I started my career as, you know, in, in animal medicine. It hurts me to have these creatures outside that I care for that I don't know from day to day if they're going to be okay. We feed them, of course. We provide them a home. But anything can happen out there. And I just, because I was not raised that way, it's very difficult for me. One of our used to be kittens, and now she's over a year old, went missing for a week. Actually, her brother did go missing and never came back. So we don't know what happened to him. All those t times fill me with great anxiety, sleepless nights. I have nightmares. Yeah, I know. It's crazy, but it's the way it is. So my first element here <laughs> is going to be these cats. So what I did is I did a fabric dive. Not that I was looking for novelty fabric that was just cats. That's not what we're doing here. We are just thinking about the issue, thinking about the thing that has caused us difficulty this year. And then you just start looking through your fabric. And before you know it, you will start pulling things that don't seem related, but for some reason remind you. So butterflies, owls, owls because we have lots of owls and I worry that the owls are going to get them. <laughs> of course, I do have some kind of cat fabric, but butterflies because there are butterflies with them, you know, all kinds of creatures out there. This fabric, it's kind of a wood grain fabric, but it reminds me of the fur of one of the cats out there. And also camouflage because she is very camouflaged, her, her fur. Uh, this one is feathers because it looks like a couple of the hawks that we have out there that I worry about too. Just things that just give you a sense of what that thing is. So I kind of pulled all those fabrics, then I put them out and I decided if I liked them together. So you're now auditioning those fabrics to see if they work well together. And one of the fabrics that I had pulled was too bright. And so I did pull that one out. So that's what you wanna do. You wanna think about 
your chaotic element, and then you want to audition those fabrics. So this is what I have now to start our first technique. I wanted to show you quick what my thread is that I'm using for this project. So of course, I love variegated, variegated thread. And so this is what I'm going to be using for quilting. And I picked this one for the piecing. Yeah, it's a little bright for this, but uh, I don't care. I think it's a gorgeous thread and I'm going to use it. So I primarily use Star. It's a great 100% cotton mercerized, of course. And I just have found that this fabric, uh, this thread is what my machine likes. I think you kind of just have to experiment with thread. I know a lot of people like Aurifil for quilting and I did try that but my machine did not like it for some reason it um, would curl too much and it would get it would break a lot so I started using star because I loved the variegated and I haven't gone back I, this is all I use I mean once in a while I might find a thread to try on some kind of project but Primarily, it's always, always, always star. Bear break. Yeah, I drink beer. Why so? Whatevs. Oh, I want to tell you before we start that I am debuting my finger. So if you haven't been following me, I will link that video below, but I had about six weeks ago, rotary cut my fingertip off, but actually I cannot believe how good it looks. The human body is amazing. It has grown back so much. I mean, if you could have seen the piece that I cut off, it would not fit in what is left now because my finger has grown so much. So basically all that's, you know, what you'll see on camera is a scar tissue. I mean, it's red because it's still new, but if you look on the other camera here, you can see how much I took off there. And my nails growing back kind of weird, but my nails growing back, which is also amazing. So I just wanted to show you that so you didn't, if you haven't, if you didn't know the story, you would wonder what the heck is wrong with her finger. So there you go. So a reminder again, when you're pulling that fabric, that fabric for each of your chaotic elements, don't think too hard about it. Improv quilting and piecing is all in the moment. It's just how you feel. I know that's going to be difficult because you're, if you're a quilter before, you, you're you used to being told darks, lights, uh, you know, this print, that print. That's, it's all about emotion and how you feel. <laughs> so free your mind again. It's, it's all about freeing your mind. The very first technique we're going to learn is probably one you've been doing. So that's why I decided to start with this one. I call it fabric cobbling because to cobble means to roughly put together in a somewhat quick fashion. So we're gonna be chain piecing and it's basically where you just take two pieces of fabric. I'm not even gonna iron these. So you take two pieces of fabric and you put them together and you sew. Chain it through, don't take it off the machine, and then put the next two through. Two patches, two patches, two patches, two patches. Now, if it bothers you that these, like these two here, don't match length, then go ahead and cut them. Cut that one to match. Oh, and I'm realizing it's probably this side. <laughs> Who cares that way too? I mean, there are, there are no rules. There are no rules. So 
a bit of a tip for this quilt as far as directional fabrics now this is not directional but this would be this one we're not going to worry about directional fabrics when we are doing the final layout there they could possibly be turned all over the place your sections so don't worry about direction because after all this is chaotic it's chaotic scrappiness so ooh, that's loud. <laughs> my machine can be kind of loud so you're just going to put pieces together so if if you're a scrappy quilter you probably have done this many many times where you just fabric together, don't worry about it, and just go for a while. If you have smaller pieces, it's called crumb quilting. This is just scrappy quilting, but I call it cobbling because you're making something bigger with your fabric. So for the first two blocks, you're going to make fabric cobbles. <laughs> You're going to do two patches, and then that will become four patches, and then that will become eight patches. And right about that moment, and again, scissor cut anytime you want. Right about that moment, you can see how big your cobbles have become, and you're going to, again, aim for 10 by 20. Don't add all cut anything down to perfect 10 by 20. That's just a measurement to aim for. And later, maybe will I will suggest that you trim them. But really, we're gonna let the fabric and what you've done with them speak. So right now, I'm just gonna go through all of these and just pair them together. To slow down for just a second and so this was a kind of choppy piece you see a little bit better close up here when you do seams you can you'll straighten that out so don't worry about getting a perfectly straight seam right now or a perfectly straight piece of fabric right now you can always straighten it out when you sew it so don't worry about that. You can always trim your seams later if you want to. Here's another thing. I have a long piece that I'm just putting a whole bunch of other chunks to it right now. I didn't have another longer piece to match up, so I'm just going to add some smaller pieces to the same strip. 
Okay, so I just have a couple of this red left and I may put it in uh, somewhere else in there. So I'm gonna take all of this stuff off the machine now, move my basket and start kind of looking at if I want to cut any of these down or if I want to just sew two to make four patches now. Again, this is just, you're doing this on the fly, you're cobbling it together. So it's however you think that these fabrics go together. And again, don't lose that emotion. You're thinking about that chaotic element. And, you know, in some cases, maybe that particular item might be a bit more, you know, you may want to have just squares and rectangles, squares and rectangles, or it may seem even more complex and chaotic to you. So maybe you do want to do some slashes across uh, and, and do some weird shape pieces. That's why, where's my scissors? That's why we're using this instead, because it just feels more, I'm just going to do it. It just feels more organic. So here's another piece. So you can take this to the iron if you'd like right now and press your seams. Or if you want to just continue sewing, you can do that too. So I'm probably going to press my seams just so I can kind of take some time to see what I have and how I want to piece them back together. So I'm still working. I have pressed my my seams, but I'm still working with my two patches here. But some of them are kind of long, so I thought I would talk about maybe cutting down. Now again, we're aiming for 10 by 20. So if you can see, there's quite a few of them that are already long enough. Now that doesn't mean I have to leave these that long. Maybe a couple of them I will. So what I'm going to do is kind of do a jigsaw situation and see how I want these fabrics to go together. But I want to add something, and that is your calm fabric. So to each of these elements, you're going to be adding one scrap of your calm fabric. So here is mine. Now. It can be any size, any shape, but I want you to think about, have you accomplished your control over that element? Have you solved that? Then I would think that piece could be bigger. I have not, so I don't feel worthy of putting my calm fabric in there in a big way. So I just cut a little scrap and I'm going to somehow fit that in. So see what I'm kind of getting at? You've got chaos and you've got calm. You need to figure out in each situation, each section of that chaos element, how that calm relates. Everything, every section is going to be different. So you might in some cases have a big piece of it of your calm. And then some of them are going to be small. Right now I feel very out of control with this particular one. I'm I'm in the midst of trying to decide what to do about the winter coming. So it feels a little overwhelming to me right now. So my calm is not really there. So that's why I am adding a little tiny piece because to be with them out there the the little girl one I'm I've developed an attachment to and she actually gets in my lap. Now she's fixed, so we have we have a dilemma. She's not going to produce any more kittens out there because she's fixed, but she's so sweet. Do we bring her in? Do we find a home for her? It's 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 complicated. My piece of calm is small. So, I'm going to see 
about cutting these down now and how I want to lay this particular element out. So here's my cat chaos. Couple interesting things that I want to draw your attention to. First of all, do you see this kind of weird seam here? Actually, there's two of them. Yeah, here's the other one. So my last video was about making patchwork from one fabric and one of the techniques I used was what is, I don't know, it's called a faux seam maybe, where you just fold over and then you sew. Well, I wasn't expecting to use that this week or even in this complete quilt along at all, but I felt like it needed it. So this is a bonus technique. The first time I used it, I just felt like it was boring. Like these were all too uniform, these chunks, and I wanted to funk it up a little bit. So that's why I did that, so that it kind of jogs these. And this one became this tiny little thing. And look at this tiny little thing here. Isn't that awesome? So I used it for that purpose. This one, I did it because there was a little pucker. So in order to get rid of that pucker, I just folded it over and sewed. And it got rid of that pucker that was right there. So again, that's a bonus little technique for you. I felt it needed to be done. Okay, the other really, really cool thing that happened during this process, which I really had hoped would happen, I didn't try but I'm really hoping that this is what happens with you guys too. I meditated on this whole issue the whole time that I was cobbling these pieces together. And remember, this technique of cobbling should not be stressful, should not be, it's real easy. You just do two pieces of fabric, go through it all, bunch of fabric, then you take those two pieces and you make four patches and you chain piece and then the four patches to the eight patches and then you see what you have you decide what should go together and then as i said i did these weird seams to fix what i thought of as were mistakes but again in improv there's no mistakes so i meditated on this the whole time because it was easy piecing and I was able to just let my mind go. And I kind of regret that this tiny little piece of calm is so tiny now, because I think that I've solved a bit of it. I've at least come to peace with part of it. And that's what my hope is for this quilt, is that we reflect on these things, these chaotic elements, and either we come to peace with it or and 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 establish that calm or we can solve it so i'm not i'm not solving this one yet but i'm i'm getting there and and that is exciting so this is roughly as i said let me grab my tape measure We've got a very imperfect rectangle here, and roughly mine is 21 by about 10 and a half or 11. I'm gonna leave it like that for seam allowance, but I'm happy with the way this turned out. One more super crazy thing that happened that I did not anticipate. When I do scrappy, I normally do not repeat my fabrics. In this case, I did, but it is so fitting. And it really shows you that if you lock into that mindfulness and meditation when you're working on this, things happen subconsciously. But this particular issue has 
a lot of repetitive issues that come up, such as kittens and seasons that we worry about them. So it really is fitting that we have repetitive elements in this particular chaotic section. So just wanted to point that out too, that some things happen without even you knowing it. Oh, here's my, my first element, my chaotic element, my first rectangle-ish piece section is done. Your assignment this week going forward is to create two of these, your first two chaotic elements completed using the fabric cobbling method. So again, be mindful of what you're doing. You're, you're creating chaos for a purpose. And don't forget to add your calming element as well. So these are the scraps that I have left. It's kind of a lot, but I'm going to save them for my backing because I'm going to create a pieced back. So that's what I'm saving these for. Remember to enjoy this process. This is not about creating more anxiety for you. This is creating balance and showing how unique your stamp can be on this project. So create your two elements using the fabric cobbling. Be mindful. Insert your calm piece. That was a sneeze break. <laughs> I had two explosive sneezes. Woo! Remember to subscribe, to like, and comment, absolutely comment to let me know what you thought of this process, what you think of this concept, what you plan to do. Not your, do not tell me or anybody else your, your chaotic elements. That's not what I'm asking for. But just, you know, if you have any questions or comments about, about the process yourself, I will have the playlist below. So you can always look to see the progress of this quilt along. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining me for this. I, I feel a, a kinship, a kingship, a kinship <laughs> with you in this project. It's a very personal one. It's a very emotional one. And it's my first. It's my first quilt along. So, um... I have equal measures of excitement and some fear that you won't like it, but you know, that's the way it goes. You put yourself out there. Remember to use the hashtags on Instagram so that I can see your progress pics. So that's Scraptastic Calm in the Chaos and Scraptastic Calm in the Chaos Q-A-L. Again, my handle on, on Instagram is Scraptastic Patchwork. Thank you so much for joining me this week. And I will see you next time where we will go over technique number two of improv piecing and patchwork. See you later.